one, check two, this is it. Welcome to the Cannabis Coffee I'm your host, Rob Cantrell. We're here. This is 296 episodes. I'm with one of my best friends in comedy. This cat is super funny. He's worked for Vice. He's worked for uh, HBO. He's been a prolific stand-up in the Brooklyn in the Brooklyn scene here. I think I, I'm overheating on the mic here. But, uh, is, uh, but he is uh, one of my good friends. And he has a great show on Wednesdays in Brooklyn at the uh, Pete's Candy Store, the Funhouse show. So let's give it up for Samir Nassim, everybody. Samir! Yo, what's up, y'all? What's happening? What's happening, bro? <clears throat> what's happening, Samir? Thanks for doing this, my man. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, and thanks for making it through that awkward uh, <laughs> intro. No, it's great, man. Uh, but I, I do like to put a little bit of bells and whistles on it, and I'll have some deep dub on there. Oh, Usually I have a beat machine, but I'll just pump some just heavy dub on that. So you you overlay beats and stuff on this? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I make them on my phone. I make, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I follow, all the theme music's are all always made. And uh, out of all these episodes, and they're all on YouTube, I have not gotten one copyright. Oh, really? None. You're pretty good at this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're so overvigilant about the copyright. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they'll get you. Yeah, they will. You know these streets. You know these oh, internet sucks, streets. But they'll wait till you get like <laughs> or like a good amount of views, and then they'll be like, no, nah, now nah, like taking the audio out. <laughs> no. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That no. might be. It might not. I might be still under the radar. Is the other thing. I could be way, way deep in the radar. We're way deep in the cannabis and the coffee and the jazz scene here in the Brooklyn uh, uh, comedy uh, 2024 universe. Um, so I don't know. I don't know, man. What do you What do you use to make beats? Do you use um, you use like an Akai drum machine type yeah, thing? Yeah, no, or? I haven't ever stepped up to an NPC. Like the first thing I had was a groove box, and that was the original. I did do uh, Married and shit and Coffee and Meat, like all these original songs. Obviously, like, it was like a Yamaha beat machine that had like a little scratch pad like it was like not a toy but it was like one grade above and i met my musician friend in virginia and he had this little studio and i was like oh man i love this thing he was showing it to me it just had this boom bap analog yeah and uh that was the first thing i played so i never really program beats now i do have like this little 808 thing that does beats and then i do do garage band like i could do loops yeah, yeah. and uh just simple loops like i I'll get baked and drink coffee and then just get into it for like nine days. That's fun. I love that. Cause like, I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a simple drum machine or like something to make like simple stuff with just to learn and just to like do with my kids. And I'm like, I want to find an easy one that isn't cause whenever I buy a gadget I'm like, yo, it's going to be on right now. Watch this. <laughs> and then like I get lost in the instruction manual. I'm like, oh no, this is especially with synthesizers. Yeah. You got to yeah. be careful because yeah, I'm a novice and I, I have been going to garage band. I've been playing guitar and stuff a lot lately and then messing with messing with samplers. And I've been going to garage band and they'll let you take it out and play with it. Like I eyed up a couple uh, beat machines and sequencers, and I and then I started playing. I was like, I can't pull this shit off. Yeah, yeah. That's what's so cool uh, about I backed man. out and I hit the beep, beep, beep. beep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, you got to nerd out on stuff. Do you, what are you nerding out on? Like in the simple, is it nuts? Is it hummus? Is what do you got going on? Uh, yo, honestly, it's the library's uh, ebook reader. That's crazy sounding. But, yeah. But you know, you know, like um, if so you. So the public library, yeah. they have an app. Yep. And you can go on to this app and people do with their tablet, right? Yeah. Because you go mad tablet. I, do, I even do it on my phone. People do it on their phone. Yep. And you can get any book that's in the New York library on your phone? Pretty much, yeah. And uh, That's pretty sick. Yeah. So like someone will tell me I'm reading this incredible book. I'm like, what is it? And they'll tell me. I'm like, I just got it. 
<laughs> and then I'll just read it, you know? Yeah. I'll start reading shit like that. And uh, no, what else am I nerding out on? Um, what book have is it, what's on your phone right now? Oh, God. Um, right now, uh, Parable of the Sower. It's kind of a sad one. Oh, nice. Um, oh, I just read the Norm MacDonald book, dude. I read the Norm MacDonald book. And you know they have it on audiobook. Too. They have audiobooks, too. But yeah, like, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not good at audiobooks because then I'll like kind of tune it out. I want to actively listen. Yes. And then I'll be like, wait, what? Like all of a sudden, you know? <laughs> you're folding your laundry and you're like, oh, do I really have this shirt? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then I'm like, wait a minute. I forget what they're saying. But when I read, I got to focus. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just want to be in it and like consume it. And like, uh, but his book is incredible. Have you read it? Because you got to hear his voice, right? Yeah. In your head, like in your head. I mean, that's a special treat. That's not even a book. That's it's like so great. Uh, and his voice was so amazing. You really know, was. he has uh, his com I mean, I wasn't a Norm MacDonald dude. I got to be honest with you. But I did as a comic. I totally respected him. And then that one set on Letterman with that World War Two joke was like one of the <laughs> best jokes I've ever heard. And I was just like, oh, shit, man. He, you know. Yeah, he's I mean, I. Can I like believe? him. I just never was. I never like people that fuck with people that much. Like I've always liked the silly, silly. But he was silly and goofy. Yeah, he was like super goofball. But this book is incredible because it's almost like a Cormac McCarthy book. It's like the way it's written is crazy. It's very descriptive and it's like written incredibly. So you're like, did he actually write these words? Because he would be an incredible talent if like it's as though he's like a masterful author not like a comedian that's how well it's written but it's funny stories it's all exaggerated and it's all like based on a true story so you know why i believe you it's canada yeah man he talks it, about that yeah because he was isolated and i've been really thinking about isolation i like i isolate myself i go out because it's stand up you're out all the time so and now with mental health people are talking about isolation but canada when you live in those type of places you just isolate because that's where people <laughs> there's nobody around, <laughs> there's no one around. <laughs> you're sort of isolated yeah yeah, yeah, you're yeah right. you are going nuts yo you yeah. are going straight to the funny farm and he grew up on a actual like farm like yeah, a really rural farm, and like it's. I think it's he's a country boy. Yeah, like a 100%. Canada country kid. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, that that would sound of. And yeah, I did hear that like he was like kind of a heavy writer. Like he was a little bit deeper than some comedian books are. Like yeah, some you of know, them oh, are. you buy them at a truck stop with some. Yeah. <laughs> with some you might as well. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you get some. You get some pickled uh, sun uh, sunflower seeds. Yeah, in that absolutely, book. man. Uh, but, uh, no, he was kind of going heavy with it, you know, uh, were you a Hunter S Thompson fan? Loved him. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. a writer. Yeah. I thought he was so great. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. What about as Jack Kerouac? Kerouac. Uh, yeah. I like Kerouac. I mean, um, on the road, really you can't on the hate road, yeah. on, you know, it's like listening to classic rock. Like, okay. You want to hate on Dylan? Really? Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like why, why, you know, the, the word has been out for yeah. a minute. No, he was great too. I mean, um, now when the greats are the greats, and it, I think when the art lasts, you know, and right. it, there's no argument when the art lasts. Agreed. You know, I mean, imagine like in like 30, 40 years, it'd be a hundred years of Bob Dylan, and he'll still be going strong. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Knocking on heaven's door. Oh, a that's great gonna one. go on forever. Yeah. Man. I mean, that's gonna be going on. The oldest, I mean, there's so many old songs, dude. It goes heavy. Yeah. Amazing Grace. I mean, these are all like American tunes. Yeah. Once you start going in international, these tunes go out to the heavens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. Music is heavy. Now, you managed a bunch of hip hop groups. When we first, I met you in Boston. I think I've had you on the podcast before. We don't have to do super origin stories, but I've seen you grow up and now you're like this awesome dad and killing comedian and got a, one of the dopest shows in Brooklyn. Thanks, man. Uh, and you always loved herbs, so we always would smoke out. So, and I've known you since you were so young, dude, like young 20s. I yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent, man. It's crazy. Yeah, no, the hip hop thing was crazy. Like I worked. That's in hip -hop. when you were working in hip hop. Yeah. You would always talk about this, and before Ace, anybody knew about Aesop Rocky, there was Samir hanging out with these dudes. Yeah, man, it was crazy. Jet fuel. <laughs> it was. It's actually so true. I. Uh, 
No, I was I was working on music videos with them, and uh, I worked in hip hop. And we what were. What does that mean when you say you worked in hip hop? So I worked at this company, and we it's had a music like a, a company. Yeah, so they did like um, streetwear, and then they had a entertainment side. Yes, as so the entertainment side, I was working on, and we you know found all these like up and coming. Uh, people in hip hop and started making videos with them, and one of them was like so ASAP Ferg, ASAP Rocky. So that whole group, like we sort of like were hanging out with on the regular. Yeah, and uh, yeah, one. And you're like 22, and they were like 16, 7. They were they were young. They young, were like you were in the very beginning. They were like 18, 18 <clears throat> around that time. Yeah, they were like 18. I remember Joey Badass. So he was a kid, and when I worked at Vice, we went to his high school because he was like beginning to blow up on the internet oh wow and we shot like a video with them and people at his high school were like oh he's like for real like this <laughs> and now he's like huge he's just, he's like enormous but yeah that was so funny uh yeah vice did the video with rocky like there was like a bathtub in it i'm trying to remember what, what video that was i did one called multiply where like the police, we didn't get a permit and I kept being like, we need a permit. When we were coming up with the like treatment for the video, I was like, they want to shoot this in New York City, outside, on the subway, all over these locations. Like we will get destroyed by the cops. And it How was- How big a, was your production? It would be it like a bunch. so big, dude. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Because it was like a number of people. You get away with like, like one people. or two people if you're going to do guerrilla style, but like anything big, it's going to get shut down. He, in a he came up with this idea one day. He hit us up and he was like, yo, come over to my house right now. I have an idea. So we go over to his place and we're sitting in the studio and he like plays this. Uh, he plays Colors, that old movie. Yeah. The gang movie. Yes. And he's doom, like, yo, you doom. remember this movie? I'm like, yeah, it's crazy. He's like, doom. I want to do an homage to this, but people wear black and white and we'll shoot it in the Bronx. And I'll be part of this video. And I was like, uh, this is a bad idea. <laughs> we need a permit. And he's like, no, we're not getting any permits. Don't worry about that. I got it. We're going to do it in the Bronx up by like Polo Grounds office. And so we went up there to shoot it. And sure enough, like because there's all these kids dressed in white, all these kids dressed in black, they're like the cops get wind of it. And then the cops pull up on us from every direction they run at us from like four different directions and there's like a white shirt which the kids are like white shirt white shirt and i'm like oh my god we're gonna get shot i was horrified oh my and god. then the cops were like what's going on here and we were like we're shooting a music video and then they were like they were like about to like take everyone down and then they were like who's it for and we're like asap rocky we're like point to him and then the guy's like hold on a second and he calls his daughter the like commanding officer oh my god for he's real? like do you know yeah he's like do you know who is that rocky she's like yeah absolutely he's amazing why he's like i'm here with him and then he asked for a photo <laughs> he's like can i get a photo with you and then he's like yo do you mind if we just hang around we'll just guard your set <laughs> they never asked for a permit or anything i was like hyperventilating oh my god anytime like, new oh, york god. cops are around yeah horrible yeah what a buzzkill, man. But at the same time, New Yorkers love hip hop. Oh, Whether yeah. it's cops or yep. firemen, or yeah, <laughs> yeah. everybody loves a good hip hop, it's especially the true. young people. They all know, they're all up on good hip hop. 100% true. Yeah, it's like the, you know, I love it. Um, yeah, are you still listening to hip hop or what are you listening to? Oh man, so um, I got back into a lot of punk stuff, listening to hardcore, I was listening to like um, uh, oi music, like a new <laughs> oi music, it's, it's fun. Um, okay. Yeah, but that's been fun, I've been listening to um, a lot of classical music, you know, I just like yeah, put it on. Yeah, classical's good. Yeah, and I'll put on like... Um, you can vibe. Yeah, um, like you know uh bach like a yeah. little vivaldi like this kind of thing yeah and just kick it um i've never done the lo-fi study beats thing do you know about this oh yeah i love me some right. lo-fi beats it, oh i live with lo-fi beats for the last seven years do you know that this is like a crazy phenomenon but people who have those channels that are popular that are lo-fi uh what do you call it um royalty free like study beats joints yeah they make like fucking twenty thousand dollars a month sometimes or more than that 
Yeah, they make like tons of money just from having that sitting there. Yeah, just and a people listen to that playlist. Yeah, and some steady beats. Yeah, man, and, and like, great shit, animation. I mean, what more do you want, man? Right? I've been getting into comic books. I've been <laughs> going back into comic book stores. Oh hell yeah! And checking them out lately, and I'm like, am I a nerd? Because I was like, I do have. Uh, I like comics. I like good art, and uh, and the shit that they're drawing now is like mind blowing. Oh, sh- I got to learn about the new stuff from you. My yeah. One of my uh, best friends, he owns Maui Comics in Hawaii. So if you're wow. ever there, you got to check him out. But yeah, it's like the, the comic book store of Hawaii, oh, he, essentially. He, yeah, oh, <laughs> of, at least spot. of Maui for sure. And um, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. He has like all this great stuff and he ships stuff out. And like he'll send me a bunch of amazing shit in a care package. And uh, it'll just be, I'll get like a huge like, heavy like box of comics in the mail sometimes and there's like a specific like kind of like r- real life ish like comic that i like and then um yeah graphic novels yeah like graphic novels things like that yeah um those are sick. yeah yeah, 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 yeah what, what yeah, are yeah. you reading on uh no i just went into the store and just walked around and i got and it, i like comic book stores and i like record stores yes and even not even buying, I just like to go in yeah. and look around. But sometimes buying yeah. and sometimes not. I might buy some comics here soon. I mean, yeah, I like the Teen Titans growing up. I like mostly Marvel, you know, growing up. Uh, I had an ill collection, but I sold it when I was a teenager for some money. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because uh, it would have been crazy now, dude. It could have been crazy. I had some number ones. of. It, it was the Teen Titans. Yeah. I had the number one of Teen Titan, like one through a hundred of the very first Teen. That was the dude with the cyborg. Dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's mental. Yeah, the ver- and they kind of had some edge to them. That was like this older kid liked them. That was like really cool when I was into comics. And I got, I, I was into this guy Sergeant. R- they used to have these army comics. I was into. This was just like really super young, like seventies, <laughs> eighties type of shit. Yeah, yeah. And, but always, yeah. My mom would always let us have comic books because you're reading. Right. And she said, you know, so she, you know, wouldn't let us watch TV, but she would just always like get a, like a stack, go to the antique store and get like a hundred of them. And so just, you're better off for that though. Yeah, 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 right? totally. I was like exposed I, to so much great art. Yeah. No, I think, uh, I think comic books are ill. I kind of am envious people that can draw and kind of can, uh, the element of escapism. Like I could never like get into Dungeons and Dragons and, you know, there's a level where I cut off. Sam, <laughs> Sam, dude, I love that never i tried my nerd once. level cut cut off i'll play some chess dude i tried i'll try. get high and play some chess i tried to do uh, dungeons and dragons once with my friend and i could not i had like childhood ADD, adhd so i like one it was like wild to just have to sit there and be like okay what now and then he was like first we need a notebook and then he like took out a pen and then, like, we started building out this character. I was like, no, nah, I'm off this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, I want to go play Nintendo Entertainment System. This is not for me. True that. Yeah, man. Uh, are you a big gamer? Uh, not so much. I. It's funny. I have, like, PlayStation 5 and Nintendo Switch. And it's like, before we started the podcast, I was telling you, like, I'll get, like, a fever where I'm like, I need this gadget. And then I'll be like, what the? I don't even know. And that's what happened with PlayStation 5. Like, no one could find it, and it had just come out. And my friend sent me a link. He was like, dude, I don't know how this is real, but you can buy this right now. People are desperately trying to find it. I was like, yeah, right. And then I tried, and it worked, and it just came to my house. And I was like, okay, I guess I need to play video games now. And then I tried, and, like, these new games are insane. Like, Which you ones to- do you have? I have um, Red Dead Redemption too. Yeah, like, everybody uh, talked about that. You could ride a horse. Yeah, that was from like PlayStation. Joe Para loved that one. Yeah, the, the horse pandemic. thing. I have like a whole bit about it, but it's like, yeah, like it gets to what I realized was like that it, one's like story one, right? That you yeah. just got to keep on being into it and shit. Yeah, it's like Frontiers style story, and it's like. You got to go ride your horse, but in order to ride your horse, you got to take a bath. It doesn't want you <laughs> sitting on it because you smell bad, but then you got to learn how to make soap. And I was like, I got to learn how to make like soap in a game. I might as well do it in real life like and turn it into an Etsy store or something. <laughs> Why am I making soap in a video game? <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, shit, man. Yeah. Uh, that was, you, but you is there any basketball games? or No, whenever I do those games... 
I did like the snowboard games. Oh, those are I so liked, fun. Yeah, I like the ones where I could feel the adrenaline and right. that I'm shooting down. Yeah. Uh, those are the ones. And car games I liked. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those are the ones I enjoyed. But, it, you know, it kind of does go back to, like, getting older and, and meditating and zen and, and just, like, this crazy internet life. It's like the more shit you have, it like, every new gadget or new toy is a new problem. I agree. You know, that's why I'm like, people have, like, 20 cars, and it's like, dude, each of those cars has 10,000 problems about to happen. <laughs> Literally. That you got to fuck with. Yeah, exactly. You You'll know? have to like fix. You have to fix and, and deal you have to with like maintain and your them. butthole itches and you're walking around and a bee's trying to sting you. Yeah, big time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, what about uh, or what do you? Uh, what are you? Sm how, do you still? I mean, you always smoke. Like you always have your own style of smoking too. You're very social with your smoking. Yeah. Uh, is that the way you still are these days? Yeah, I think both like at home and, and luckily in public now, right? Like, yeah. Back in the day, we would have to be like very low key about that. Um, but now like it's New York, so you can just Thank smoke God wherever. Thank for God for the legalization of cannabis. Am I right? Yeah, man. It like was so all this, not to go, uh, but all this Trump shit and all this weird World War Three. at least we got some weed going I on. I know, seriously. <laughs> we were getting arrested for smoking weed outside. Dude, I got three nights in the jail, man. I know you got, everybody got hassled, man. Everybody's life was a hassle. Now that hassle is not there. Thank God. And it takes People that element. People are getting bold, but, you know, I just do, at least it's at least a little bit more of a truthful life. Yeah, for sure. And also, it destigmatizes it because people are smoking cigarettes all over the place. Yeah. And then no, nobody can smoke weed. And it's like, the cigarettes are way worse, man. Way you worse. know. And um, But I also think it removes that, like, anxiety and that level of, like, worry when you're smoking. Like, uh, like if you want to go out and have fun and, like, go to a show or something, smoke some weed, like, you were nervous when you were smoking it that you were going to get caught. So it ruins like the moment a little bit or puts like a damper on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But now it's just like nice to be able to like go yeah, out and just have like have a couple of toots. Away. And to be a little bit older and bolder than I am. Like, yeah, for my knees. I, just, I, I always say with the cannabis market, I do believe it's like for 30, 40 and 50 year old dudes, you know, or girls, you know, it's for, you know. Yeah, I think cannabis is good for growing old if you I can agree. handle it. But some people can't, you know, yeah, everybody's got can. their own. Everybody got their own gig and they got to figure themselves out. I honestly realized that too as an adult where I used to say, um, you know, well, maybe you haven't found the right strain or something. Now I realize that it's not for everyone. And like, I feel blessed that it, it adds to my life rather than like subtracts. And um, I think it's a great natural medicine. You know, I don't often take like Tylenol or Advil or any of that kind of stuff. It's like, for me, I'll take like a tutor or two. And I'll feel like instantly better instead of like putting my kidneys and whatever through. Uh, 100%. Like, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I always know, Samir, I always used it as a uh, way to get away from hard drugs yeah. and drinking. Yeah. And I thought drinking was whack. And I thought hard drugs was whack. And I knew like it just took a toll on my body. Yeah, and I smoked cigarettes too. I was, yeah, I was messing with tobacco since like the third or fourth grade. Right. Um, so by my mid twenties, I was just like, I am done with anything that like takes away. Yeah, is bunk. You yeah, know, because it's just so fucking hard. Yeah, man. So cigarettes always kind. Cigarettes and beer was fun. I have to admit, and beer was fun. I like being social, but yeah, then the hangovers were, were too much. And then the cig every time I smoke a cigarette, I feel like I just could feel it. You know, right. And when I smoke herb, and I think other people feel different about it. You know, but. When I smoke a herb, I feel better. Not always better, but, you know, you just got to watch yourself. But I do believe it's good for my joints and my blood pressure and keeping just everything kind of chill in this modern 2024, you know, yeah. future world or the AI future, <laughs> AI, AI <laughs> Elon Musk future world uh, that we're swimming through outer space in uh, every second of the day. Yeah, man. I think that's funny that you mentioned that because I but think that... I haven't that done much psychedelics. Have you, are you, I know the mushrooms are mad out there. Have you been dabbling? Have you been, I yeah, know man. You know what? Afraid. I took like... I took a bit, not purposefully, but like just coincidentally took a break from them. I used to eat them much more often, but um, mushrooms for sure. Um, 
I never really, knock on wood, have like a bad trip as long as I'm like, you know, reasonable about how many I take. Yeah. Um, but I also like I had got my hands on some like insane LSD that was like incredible, but it was almost like too powerful where it was awesome. It was fairly like clean for my could tell, but it lasted so long that like I would, it, I would have to eat it at like 9 a.m. And then at 3 a.m. that night, I'd be like, all right. This is getting a little, this is a little much, but, uh, you know, yeah. like an 18 hour trip. I'm like, okay, this is not good, but yeah. Um, you gotta be on a bus in, uh, <laughs> up in, <laughs> you gotta be up in Humboldt on a school bus, yeah. you know, going up to go hang out with the coyotes at that point. <laughs> I don't know. Psychedelics. I think that's why I've stayed away from it in, in New York city. Like I gotta be around nature if I yeah. mess with some mushrooms. Like I just gotta be next to a mountain. And now at my age, I kind of know what's going on. So if I do do it, I would like treat it as kind of more of a ceremony. Like I would do a little bit of yoga and meditate, make sure the place is locked down. Exactly. And, uh, and figure it out, you know, figure it out. Yeah. That's with, like, with a I mean, that's and about a friend. Like, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. A like dog. the wilderness. Yeah, and the like, wilderness, you're, yeah. it's like nice. Cause you feel make some coffee. Yeah. hundred percent. Like you just yeah. feel like you're in a safer space and stuff. This concrete jungle is not the ideal place for it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Though I would go out some nights and like just be tripping like crazy. Like on my birthday, like a few years ago, I had a party and it was just jam packed and I just ate these insane mushrooms. I wasn't even, I just thought it was funny. And then I was like, wow, I am flying. I was like, profusely <laughs> sweating. And you were having a good time. Yeah, so having a great yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, I, I told a story on this is like, what, I think one of the first times I took mushrooms, I saw Maceo Parker. Oh, no way. Do you know who that is? Is, is that a drummer? No, it's a horn player. Oh, and he played oh. for like all these funk bands. Like he was just doing a loop of all like these places in Colorado. But uh, he played for, with, with James Brown. Oh, and really? then he kind of got in with the jam band circuit. And he just was like, I don't know. I saw him on this one night and he had a horn section. And they just tore down. Like everybody was dancing. It was like, bah! it was just funk. It was just oh, straight. Incredible funk on that, super mushrooms in your 20s it was just like <laughs> that's tight yeah it was fun i feel like uh parliament funkadelic was like a very um what do you call it uh psychedelic like they <laughs> got think? like really no i think they got really into psychedelics and that's what made them Funkadelic. I think I heard a story about this. Oh yeah, they were they. they I mean, yeah, the, they were the Black uh, Grateful Dead. Dude. Yeah, they, they really were. were the, dude. They were those cats. You know, yeah, they're man. ready to go uh, one step further into the beyond. They really were, man. They were wild. <laughs> and but, but also a, a brilliant musicians as the Grateful Dead. Like they were, you know, some of the best. Musicians. Incredible, man. And. Also, uh, George Clinton also played with James Brown. Like, it all comes from, like, Bootsy Collins, James Brown. Like, James Brown, Bootsy Collins, George that's Clinton. What I, that's what I thought. He did and then put. Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, all the way down the line. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy because um, that is one other thing I'm nerding out about right now is the Grateful Dead. I mean, I have been for years and stuff. But right, right. Um, now just going back and listening to a bunch of old live sets. And it's just wild because every single version of this song is different like you know what i mean like every night was a different night yeah yeah in some, and some years are the best i guess the best for them were the 74 or yeah. to 76 yeah. era even like 77 live at cornell is like incredible yeah yeah 77 yeah. when they get the second drummer back but even the shows right before they have the second drummer like they're doing some really interesting cool shit like Dude, the whole incredible. time yeah no the grateful dead you can't fuck with them in terms of art and writing and no yeah i mean i started in the like, san francisco but i used to hate on him when i was young Sam, i couldn't stand it yeah but i did see him i did see him at rfk and i was liking him by then and i saw with jerry and wow. uh, yeah i saw him for real real yeah, real real yeah that's and, the real, it, and real. they were amazing and they sounded amazing it was it was and i also saw the who at that same stadium rfk oh, it really? was bigger than that yeah, I saw a lot of grass. I saw the Tibetan Freedom Concert. I saw uh, the Beasties. Yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. That was crazy. Ripped that place apart, man. Dude, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I uh, mean, I just saw some ill shows there. And that was at RFK, you said? RFK, and that's where the, yeah, the, the commanders, uh, the Redskins played. But they also did this cool thing, with, like for the alt kids, it was the HFS Festival. And that was like Nirvana and shit would play, and they would play at that stadium. Amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, you. The, I think Gabe was at that show too. Yeah, the, the Tibet- Tibetan one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet he was. Everybody. Yeah, I think in he DC. T- told like a funny story about it. Like one time, I'm trying to remember. Uh, the, Gabe, uh, you you host a show with. Yeah, that's and right. Sorry, Gabe Pacheco. Give, give a shout out to your podcast. Oh yeah, it's called Halal Cartels. Word. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. I uh, yeah, but the dead man. The thing I love is how like you can be incredibly like lifted and high and just be listening, and then everything will slowly like filter out, and then someone will just have their like solo, and it's just bananas. And then like the drum solos are so wild. You're just like, I don't know. It's like, and then the Jerry guitar solos are the just illest, bonkers. Like, yeah, bananas. Bonkers. Yeah, you and then you're just like bopping so many along. Roll and roads like, is a great Jerry song. It's so incredible how they speed up, slow down, speed up take you on this journey oh even yeah they the are solos. jazz they they do all tempos they're blues doing all jazz jazz world music uh it's everything and then you know he came from the literary world like jack kerouac and all that was like his teenage like he hung with those guys a little bit i didn't know that yeah in san francisco jerry garcia was a you know he was like a beatnik but he was like not the king you know he's just like was kind of around but like um jack kerouac and all those guys were blowing up like he kind of spilled out and then his 20s kind of started playing music you know but there was a point where he was like he was writing and doing a lot of poetry and just saw that whole scene um you know ginsburg and all that like they were all intellectuals yeah so he kind of like how that lends itself is the songwriting so the songwriting is not like I that, love you. No, you love me. Right. They're talking that checks about out, space man. turtles and the soul and the planet. Yeah, dying. like Terrapin Station they're, they're, and like you going, got like you know. Dire Wolf and stuff. Yeah, dude, yeah. that's so crazy. I yeah, I, I was gonna tell you. I've been reading this other book. I read it once, like twenty years ago. My friend gave me a first edition copy of it for like my birthday, and I saved it. And I'm like so glad I did. I didn't even know. But it's called Trout Fishing in America. Do you know this book? Yes, it's by Richard Brodigan, but it's like it's not about trap fishing. He like it's like a humor book and he purposely named it that so that it would confuse (laughs) like librarians and like bookstore people like uh, but it's like in the fishing section. Yeah, he's like beat adjacent. Really funny guy. He's a real character. Like I read uh, somebody else talking about him and like he would dress like a hippie, but also like a frontiersman. (laughs) <laughs> like it was a combo so he would just look like a crazy person and um yeah he just is like a goofball but he was All like those really incredible have like that goofball yeah. rock star <laughs> thing it's like yeah. tom wolf draw you know where it's all white Yep. And, uh, yeah, you know, as we Mary see. Pranksters, like that whole crew. Of people. I was watching. Yeah. That whole that whole scene is a whole other scene. Yeah. That man. The, the dead played at. But him. Yeah, that whole story, like, I kind of got my head around it, but I, yeah. Dude, there's a story I heard this is so trippy. I, it just, like, occurred to me. But there's this guy who became obsessed with um, uh, mental health and, like, uh, about managing mental health and, like, well-being with mushrooms, with psychedelic mushrooms. Yes. And he went to, he was a master horticulturalist. He went to south america and found a like mutated psychedelic mushroom so he collected spores from it and mislabeled them purposely and brought them back to the u.s and started growing this until like he got like an albino um one of it that was like massive which is like the origin story of albino penis envy that mushroom yes and ape they call him and um (laughs) <laughs> and I guess like he tro- he was like saving up money to make a huge industrial like factory to make like mushrooms to like disseminate among the people to cure like mental health and stuff. Yes. And then he was like found dead randomly. But this story is so crazy because I was thinking about what we were talking about earlier about mushrooms. And I was like, wow, um, that was like a Walter White story of like a mushroom guy when uh, mushrooms are supposedly like so chill there's still like this weird cd underworld in the mushroom game yeah but um but he was like adjacent to like yeah. all of the grateful dead people and like those totally. yeah, yeah, that, yeah those folks and so he a lot was of like, like the this bear stuff. of mushrooms yeah man yeah and um and yeah totally like 
they even weed was like a grateful dead like the dissemination of seeds across the united states was also directly linked to the grateful dead and i'm going like so like sour and diesel california is like the best place to grow cannabis like in the world exactly you know as much as this new york and the new york weed i love shout out to uh, all the harney brothers sponsoring this episode uh, secretly um, but, uh, I love the New York weed, but the, it, classically, you know, in terms of agricultural, uh, yeah, California has the best you know, soil in, in, in light. Yeah. You can't beat it. I mean, people are doing great things in like, uh, in New York and working on it, but still it just never matches up. Sadly. Yeah. It's funny <laughs> no, though. It does. It does match up to me. It really does match up really well. I think the California went a little too wild, like almost the Kush got so frosty and that's how the whole spray on movement happened. Yeah. Yeah. It almost got good. so crazy. Whereas, but no, but the real or where you usually used to get in the nineties, the people that had the best weed and probably still do to these day, is the old hippies yeah, from they Northern absolutely California. Do. Yeah. Dude. They were the original they were the original cats that like brought it to the world. Look up um Big Sur Holy Weed. This was a uh, weed that was grown in like Big Sur by like a select few people. Oh wow. And they had like the seeds and like the cuts and uh I I'm not sure how much of it still exists if anyone keeps cultivating it, but it was insane and the Beatles would smoke it because it was a limitless high. So you just kept getting higher. You didn't hit like a wall and you wouldn't get tired. So it was supposedly like this like utopian weed that was like meant for creativity. And you could only get your hands on it if you knew these people. I could see that happening. Isn't that cool? I've been to Big Sur and it is like on the side. It's literally on the side of America. You're like, <laughs> you're standing, you're literally like, look like you're on this like, grassy knoll but and you're looking out into the ocean you're like oh that's the end of america but it's beautiful like the sun is all on it like the sunsets are some of the most beautiful sunsets in the world so like picturesque and like amazing yeah yeah and the nature is just you know and it's so uh it's rocky and and, like so classically it was it's hard terrain to like live there so it's like you know not found out now it's found out a little bit but it's still hard to get up in there so I could see weed growing. What I'm saying is I could see weed growing really well up there. Oh, yeah. Um, it was, yeah, I think it's a perfect place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Northern California is a great, great place. Um, you were in SF for like a long time, right? Yeah, not a long time, but it's weird that like those early years, you know, mean so much. But yeah, 99 to 2002. Yeah. Did, no, 99 to the middle of 2003. Yeah. And then I moved to L.A. for like a year and a half, and then I came to New York in 2005. Yeah. So I've been here for so long. Yeah, man, almost 20 years. I know. Yeah. We're New Yorkers. Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm, I mean, I've been here for 14 years. Yes. Yeah. I remember you from Boston. I know, dude. That's so crazy. <laughs> Time flies, man. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it's been it's been so good. What do you got g- coming up? Like, what do you uh, what do you, I, I, you don't have to do comedy wise? I guess. What else are you obsessing on? Do you mess with vinyl? I do. I you know what's so funny is I have a Stanton TAD like turntable, like yeah. the old DJ turntable. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I had yeah. like a set and I had a uh, mixer and stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Not even the Serato, like the classic oh, joint. Yeah, I had both. Yeah, so oh, I had Serato. Wow. Like I used to DJ back in the day, but. Um, so I had Serato, the first version of Serato, actually. The yeah, first, Serato like, box. Was sick. When I it saw Ill. that, it's so much fun. I wish I, I think everybody would love to have Serato Dude, laying around. Dude, you know around. what's crazy? There's a YouTube clip of this, but it's just the RZA from Wu-Tang. He's like eating and talking to a guy at like a restaurant. I think they're like a Chinese restaurant. And he's like, you know Serato? I invented that. And he's like, what? And it's like, before Serato existed, Rizzo like spent all this money developing like vinyl, manipulatable vinyl. So you could like digitally manipulate vinyl and he had a prototype and everything. Then Serato came out with Serato and it was like a wrap. Like he didn't even bother <sighs> putting it out because he couldn't compete, you know? But um, yeah, Serato is so cool. Yeah, and- there's a great clip when you just said that, when I said somebody doing a Serato it was Rakim going up to DMX. He's like, yo, the other night I was hanging out and I had my Serato, I had my turntables, and I was cutting DMX. <laughs> really? <laughs> Just going back and forth. Because with Serato, it's really easy. Yeah. It's whatever you have on your uh, Spotify. Yeah. You can just go. And then 
the scratch isn't like it doesn't have to be in the. I guess it does have to be in the groove. Yeah, I mean, you have, well, to have some skill, but yeah. you, if you know a little bit about DJ and Dude, you can it handle rules. it, I yeah. mean, like what was interesting was I would do, I would do like straight up vinyl. So I'd bring a crate with me of oh, all my yeah. selections, and I'd be like hauling a, a crate or two in. And then I was like, yo, uh, this is getting wild. And then I realized, oh, well, Serato, I bring a hard drive and I have thousands of songs. I can beat match in like one second. I would really not um, cheat. And like, I would normally be like using my like mind to be like, oh, what am I going to put on next that would like match with this? But it makes it so easy that you could beat match it. And then you can just like easily cross fade between two things without any guff like you know what I mean? You could I totally match. know what you mean. Yeah, because beat matching was the hard part with turntable. People were like, oh, what is a DJ? But before Sarah, you had to like really understand tempo and pace of every song you were playing, and or and then to actually try to blend them, they would say it's called blending. Right. But when Serato came, when they do that beat match, like when it was like, and when oh man, it was sick. And then you could like here. you would easily just like pick among those songs if you wanted to but yeah it just made it so easy. that's when girl talk came in and that <laughs> yeah that <laughs> every was song was remixed like more than a feeling if you smell <laughs> rose it smells like doo doo more than a feeling oh my god it's so true girl talk just took all of fm radio and just put of all all of like r&b like hip hop radio of the 90s and uh you know just mashed them he together he literally did but beautifully i would listen to it oh yeah he I, had I, some I, epic I, he had some epic cuts it's so funny that you say that cuz i recently thought about him i was like i wonder if that's even on spotify cuz it was like a nightmare for clearance you know yeah yeah it was all like it was so sampled to the point where it was like ridiculous but he was stacking them like it got to be this other art form thing yeah like, that's yeah. right around like like when dubstep like people just started fucking with technology heavy heavy yeah you know who's like super heavy is diplo oh yeah isn't he like heavy like i didn't pick up on the how heavy he is until recently and then i'm like oh man this guy his beats are insane. This guy lives for the beats. That's really the it, electronic yeah. beats. Like, I mean, he just lives for the perfect beat. Yep. And he's beyond him. Like, it's a, like a whole he's other. Like he's like a going, pop producer. Yeah. Yeah, but he went to like reggaeton, and that's actually the dopest shit. Like dub. He went dub dub. You oh, know. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know. And all the Caribbean artists he signed and would put them on these fucking super electric beats. Like that's insane. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, there's this, um, oh, I wish I could remember the name of it because it's so dope, but it's like a reggae um, toaster uh, Instagram where it's just a shot of like a person, like an artist in front of the mic. Yes. And they go off, you know? Yes. And it's like, absolutely incredible it's on instagram i'm trying to remember the name oh yeah those me. things are insane they're so good though and then you just see the line between like reggae and hip-hop yeah like you'd see what cool herc brought over and i guess in jamaica like every town would have their sound system guy and then ev like and this one into the 40s into the like third like every like emceeing was like a thing and it wasn't like rap but you would get on there and sing or do chop but now they chop they kind of got influenced by hip-hop and it's just that <laughs> yeah yeah and like even before that they would like they were doing like their own sort of rhyming and like stuff like that and singing and, yeah. like it was like it, 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 the softer shit that's like no 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 sister yeah. nancy like yeah. the softest shit that shit sounds harder than the hardest shit now yeah you put on the most evil death metal but then you follow it with a no no no, no. no. <laughs> yeah it's so true yeah which one's realer yeah which one sister which, nancy man there's dude, a doc no 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 sister nancy's gonna kick the shit out of that death metal dude they're doing a documentary on her right now actually i think it's it's premiering soon or like it's just premiered or something, but there's a sister Nancy documentary. Yeah. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been going deep into those dub records and like you see all those nineties hip like dip set would just fucking chop up some of these old reggae tunes. Oh, yeah. Like all these old, like, you know, no, no, no. And then just even some other stabs like they do is all like beginning of reggae tunes. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. 
Um, man, we're at what? How many minutes? We're at forty-four minutes, my oh, man. Oh wow, we're coming we're here getting, closer. It's the cannabis coffee hour. You know, I I, I hope I can. Hang on to you for a little bit. I guess where we we talked about music, we talk about cannabis, we talk about comedy. Do you uh, you talk about just your show, Pete? Give that a proper send out. Oh yeah, and let man. people know because you know this is like weed music people. Oh hell yeah! So uh, we have so this uh, show is perfect for you. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Well, we have a show every um, every Wednesday night at Pete's Candy Store in Williamsburg. It's a music venue slash comedy spot, and uh, we've been doing it for ten years. Rob's done the show a bunch, and Rob recorded a record at Pete's Candy Store. I loved Store. it so much. I love shout out to Pete's Candy Store. Shout out to Samir. I love you, man. And oh, that I love you show. Too, man. That was the best, man. It was incredible. Yeah, and the and the um. So for the fans of Rob, like the Cobra, the Cobra, King um, Cobra yeah, King Cobra bit is was so fucking cool. Like the way you guys did that and the visual for that and stuff. Dig it up, look it up on the net. You'll see it. Yeah, but. yeah, it it came out. That was a you know that really was a punk. I wanted a punk rock show. Yeah, I wanted one night. You know, it's not shot on special. It's it it, it got taken down from Spotify in the beginning. Oh, when they like took down all the comics yeah. records. Yeah. So it, and that was like in its first year, but now it's been climbing up there, you know, and some of the bits I'm um, here or there with, but then there's some tracks on there that's amazing. And then yeah, that was so much fun. And that night was so cool and uh the album cover came out and that album came out and then the pandemic hit like within like a year of that. So yeah. I haven't put out anything since that, and that's kind of my next step in figuring that shit out. Are you, have you shot a special or done an hour? I'm uh, planning on doing one in a few months. I've, dude, I've been planning on this for years, and now I finally just like set the wheels in motion. I know when you set the wheels in motion, you can pull it off. Do yeah. you have a, Do you want to give out any of the secrets, or you want to keep it on the I th DL? I think the key is like, do you have a, a venue? I guess those. Yeah, are, I you have, know. I, I was questions. talking to uh, Mike Leibowitz about uh, the gutter. Yes, that and place I, is amazing. Yeah, Shout I out feel to like the gutter. It's worth... that's one of the best places to just see stand up. If you're ever in New York, yep. check out their Saturday and Wednesday night. The comedians you should know. It's always a fucking sick lineup. Some of the best people in in in, in the world stop by. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's an incredible show, and I I was like, yeah, I think this would be you'd be the great place. there. Yeah, I'd love it. Yeah, and so, you have so many friends in town, like you could pack that joint out. I would love to, man. Yeah, and I mean, I think that's where I want to go for the time being, and like try and do an hour there and then um yeah so i just it's been a long time in the work so i'm excited to do it i'm like planning on it yeah this is the era of that shit it's time to like buckle down and yeah. boss out yeah man yeah uh thank you for bossing out and coming over here have you ever heard that tune by juicy j which one boss up oh dude i love the juice man <laughs> the juice man's insane yeah i uh, Juicy Dark Mafia, Horse, i love juicy it. Yeah, I Incredible. love uh, Katy Perry. A dark Horse, yeah, he, he's in Dark Horse, isn't yeah, he? Is. Yeah. And so you ready for perfect song? There's a no going back. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> Juicy Dude, that's a hilarious I of love a person. Drama. Yeah, he's a uh, sick man. Uh, shout out to Juicy J, but shout out to Samir Nassim. Shout out to uh, Shapeshifter uh, Lab here and. Uh, Thanks it. That's it. Peace and love, everybody. That's us. Later. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>